Geek Dad Life presents Toy Geeks Live Toy Talk Show. Tonight we're going to talk about the pictures for Wave 2 of Masters of the Universe Origins Revelation Masterverse figures getting revealed. We're also going to talk about Mondo unveiling some new Motu figures, as well as Mattel shifting from their Masters of the WWE-verse figure line to their new WWE Superstars toy line. All of that and more tonight on Toy Geeks. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Toy Geeks. My name is Jay, and with me, as always, on Sundays at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, is my dear friend, John. John, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. How are you, Jay? I am doing well for this Sunday. Uh, had a great day of toy hunting yesterday, in which I got to see you, as well as uh, many other uh, Toy Geek friends, uh, in the RDU area, if you if you follow me on Instagram, I I shot some video of my difference, so you might be spoiled in our on our toy halls later in the episode. But I also posted a picture of you, me, Gary, and Mike from uh, I'm blanking on his store name now. <laughs> Nerd Bombers. Nerd Bombers. Thank you. Sorry, Mike. Nerd Bombers. Uh, uh, we're all at the Raleigh Flea Market this weekend, so uh, great weekend there. Happy to be here with all of the fellow toy geeks. Alex Martinez is here. PD Dubs is in the house. Hey, oh, Cobweb. Four dislikes before it even starts. Haters Weekend continues. SMH. Uh, yeah, uh, apparently, if you if you like a, a cartoon show, it gets people really, really angry. Uh, so if you haven't done it yet, hit the like button uh, on the, <laughs> for this episode. Um, <laughs> Space Cowboy is here. Uh, so happy. Waves 2 and 5 came this week. Feels great. Ooh, that's very... Two's that apparently the thing they just didn't ship out a lot of uh, for Motu Origins. So happy for you, Space Cowboy. Um, J Mac is uh, here. It uh, looks like he also got as well uh, for Wave 2. So that's really good news. Uh, Dartherian is here. PD Dubs missed the Revelations uh, recap. What is the toy community response? I loved it. Well, that's been what I've heard. We'll talk a little bit about it at the start before we get into the actual Motu stuff. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Stanley's Toy Channel is here. Michael Palmer. Uh, let's see. Comics 1017. I Brandon 3G. Chris Bather. Good day. Toy Geeks. John Rhodes. Uh, let's keep going. Justin CAF is in the house. Uh, Adam Smedberg. Toy Doc. Nightmare. T Ponder. All music fan. CF. Who the hell is getting his 40 likes already? I, I, I. I I have angered uh, the the people that that hated Revelation. I guess this is how it goes. Uh, Moss Man, hey Fats, Todd Smith, uh, Nelson, Sean, Nikki Six, uh, Chris. Uh, actually, finally getting Origins in Australia. Very, that's awesome. Uh, Jamie, on just likes, so I could cancel one of those dislikes. Like who dislikes this channel? <laughs> uh, old school Shinobi. Um, evil villain Riley Bob KJ Smith, a packed house. We got a packed house uh tonight, and uh, excited to be here with you all. Uh, Mark, hey, what's up, fellas? I loved Revelations, fight me. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I appreciate the enthusiasm, Mark, but uh, you know, I think something that I love about uh, the community uh, that we have here on this channel. Uh, and on these live shows like Toy Geeks is um, we all are respectful. We can have different opinions. I think that is perfectly fine. And we can like things and not like things. Um, and something that, you know, I haven't really seen it in this chat. There's a bit of it on Fridays. Uh, but let's be respectful of each other. And uh, if I see, you know, stuff is being disrespectful, name calling, just doing just lame stuff, going to kick you out. But again, for I, I think we have an amazing community here of varying backgrounds and different opinions and um, we all love uh, toys and things of a geek nature. So let's all be respectful of each other. So, uh, yeah, Revelations, Lev Revelation dropped on Friday. Um, I really dug it. You can check out uh, my thoughts as well as uh, Ralph's on Friday. Uh, but the kind of a lot of the uh, frustrations leading up to it definitely boiled over on Friday. And uh, while I totally understand that if you were looking for one thing and this this zigged where you thought it was going to zag, I can see you were frustrated. Uh, but for me, uh, I I really dug it. Uh, I just enthused about it. Watched it again uh, yesterday. 
um, has me really excited. I think the thing, the context to remember here is this is just half of, of a whole. Uh, this is the first half and uh, reading interviews and stuff like that. Um, uh, if you, if the, the, the finale, the midpoint finale was definitely a big cliffhanger. Uh, but uh, I think it's, we're still holding their five episodes to resolve uh, this total story. But John, we don't know your thoughts here. What was your first hot take thoughts of revelation? I really liked it. I'm not going to say I loved it, mm -hmm. but I, I liked it. You know, I went in open-minded with no, you know, preconceived, you know, this is the, um, Tila show. There was no, I went in op like no, um, no opinions. It was just, I'm going to enjoy it and see what happens. And that's what happened. There was a few things that I didn't, um, I'm not gonna say I didn't like them, but I wish they went different. Mm -hmm. Um, number one, <laughs> um, the motherboard. And I don't mean just everything being like very techie. It was creepy. It creeped me. I, out. I just, I just mean calling it the motherboard and then, oh. you know, the, the constant for the motherboard for the motherboard or whatever, you know, Triclops kept saying, and I really couldn't separate. I could not separate Henry Rollins and Triclops <laughs> where <laughs> a lot of people like, have that with, um, uh, I'm playing on his name now. Um, the guy did Merman. Batman. Oh, Kevin Con Kevin Conroy. Conroy, thank you. Yeah, a lot of people had that thoughts about Kevin Conroy, but it was Henry Henry Rollins for you. <laughs> yes, and I th I I really just think it's because Henry Rollins post Black Flag post the Rollins Band, he's done so many just spoken word albums mm -hmm. where it's just like so you just got used to hearing his voice, and especially oh. when he's so like um like powerful in his vocals, where he's just so. Uh, <laughs> He's just so in it mm -hmm. where it's like, all right, what am I? Am I just listening to Henry Rollins or am I listening <laughs> to trap jaw? <laughs> but I just didn't really like, I wish they just picked something else rather than just calling it the motherboard. I just thought that was kind of, okay. I don't know. Odd. That's minor, that's, right? minor, yeah. but, but that's it. That's, yeah. that's my only, it's my only thing. Yeah. Um, uh, no, I, you know, uh, again, really excited about it. Seems like a lot of, uh, people in the chat did like it and, um, and some didn't, I, you know, and I think, you know, uh, I know T Ponder wasn't a big fan of stuff like that, but again, it's okay to not like, if it's not your thing, I think that's fine. I think even for me, I, I'm still a mini comics guy and I think I still like 2000 and X better. Uh, but mm -hmm. for the first half, it I watched every episode. I was into every, you know, I'm, I wanted to see where the story was going to go. And you want to know something? I didn't talk about it on Friday. But Wondar was in it, baby. It's official, official canon character. Finally getting his time. Wondar. Come on. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, you, and you all, and I know this group did because it seems like, a, but we get, we're getting a comic book triclops instead of Wondar in Origins. Still unacceptable. <laughs> but yes exactly and you know we got to see characters we've never seen animated so that was nice you know mm -hmm. got to see scare glow oh, animated scare glow was amazing tony todd did a fantastic job oh. it was incredible man oh uh, and mike or oh mm. um i did want to call it mr hootie dean uh 10 bucks uh to super tag his comments um, hi, I just wanted to say watching Revelation took me back to the 80s when me and my cousin dragged all over uh, Motu, uh, all of our Motu figures, Beasts and Castles uh, to the creek and played He-Man until the sun went down. It definitely uh, has that feel um, and that it absolutely um, lack of He-Man is a little bit of a letdown, but to tell another great story was worth a sacrifice. And it seems like and from what I've heard of the interviews and stuff like that. Um, the Adam storyline and everything will really be fleshed out and um, in the second half. Uh, so I, I do think there is uh, more He-Man. It's just, again, it's five episodes, and it, it, it he was only not in it for those three. He was in it in flashbacks, and then it was back in by the time uh, end of episode four. So, uh, But I totally get it, if, if that's the thing that he bugged you. Um, I still think it was a good story otherwise. Uh, Justin just pass on and he's okay. Absolutely. If it's, if it's not for you, that's fine. Um, uh, but yeah, can we discuss, uh, that in Eternia heaven only exists for the heroes and everyone just goes to the back to earth. Pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fair call out that because 
you know, I kind of appreciate that uh, aspect of nature of life. You know, you kind of you're born of atoms and you kind of return to atoms when you when you pass or whatever. So I, I appreciate a Moss Man's uh, concept there. But you are right. Like only I guess the best of the best get to have uh, paradise. Um, <laughs> here's the thing. Uh, with with the whole Adam, you can never come back. Listen, I saw this played out, and all dogs go to heaven. Uh, she's like, you can never come back. That dog was back in heaven in no time. I don't believe it. Sorry, pre <laughs> 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 uh, Um, uh, like the different tone of the flashbacks too made sense. Absolutely love the flashbacks. Love how they were kind of the. Uh, you know, definitely the uh, old school 80s nostalgic kind of hokey. And I love the explanation for the guy. Really, with jokes that bad. I was like, well, he's a teenager. Like, yeah, he's a teenager. I love that. Yeah, I thought that was fun. Um, and so many Easter eggs, a bajillion Easter eggs. Like, we could spend seven hours of the show trying to go over little nitty gritty detail. So much of that. Um, uh, James Maton, uh, Manton. Uh, I don't understand the fans that are raging out so much. They feel they need to attack those that dislike it. Dudes and chill. It, that's that's where I have the problem. Again, if you don't like something, that's fine. But I think the aggressiveness um, to those that did like it, I think, um, is uh, gr- just it doesn't need to be in this space, you know. And I think it it makes it not fun. Like this, it's it's toys and it's a cartoon show. It's supposed to be fun. And it's okay if it's not your thing. You didn't like it. I get that. But let's let's have fun. Like it's it's not it's it's a dude in a loincloth with a with a vet. Like not even not even covering his nipples. Uh, it's with a sword and shield and furry boots. It's supposed to be fun. <laughs> yeah. This wasn't this wasn't Scorsese trying to remake Jaws. This is <laughs> this was a cartoon. Uh, uh, I don't think it's a pre turning rule book. That's true. Um, and we got we got the uh, Eternia playset alive, which was really monorail and all for no reason. That monorail. I know it. We got Bionatops. Oh, Bionatops! I I loved so much of the um, power of Grayskull love in episode five. Yeah, because that is you know of the never released, never fleshed out ideas. Power of Grayskull is, it has to be like a top five for toy lines, right? The hero concept, um, uh, the, the, just the whole powers of, of Grayskull. We, we got tastes of it with the mini comics and some of the toys were released and to see some of it fleshed out finally on screen was awesome. And uh, again, there, there was a lot of fan service in there. So all of that in episode five and then the scare glow being an amazing character in episode four, um, there was a lot of really cool stuff for Motu fans, I think. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, I branded through G Revelation Attorney a playset. I'd see an Origins Attorney a playset before a Revelation happens. That's true. That's, true. that's I, a that's a seven inch scale Eternia. <laughs> That'd be absurd. <laughs> um and uh. Yeah, I, I would prefer it to be Origins, to be honest. Um, yeah. One for scale. Mm-hmm. And two, I just think it's more fun. Like, the Origins line is much more of, like, a fun toy line. And I do really like the Revelation figures. But that's much more... I don't know why, but I just think it'd be more fun as an Origins playset. Yeah. Yeah, you can you can just feel the playability in Origins over Revelation. Mm-hmm. Space Cow, the monorail one dark bionatops was surprised me uh, flying uh, surprised me, but the flying disc from the motion picture killed the fun. <laughs> Listen, I know the movie's bad, but I love it. Like you know, yeah. <laughs> Although, didn't they have the flying discs in two thousand X? They may have. I thought they did in, you know, and again, like a training. Uh, <laughs> no, Courtney Cox. <laughs> that, that's, if I did one thing I'm very upset about from Revelation is no Courtney Cox. How could you, Kevin Smith? <laughs> it's not <laughs> over. We're only halfway. There's plenty of time. You're right. There's still five episodes. Courtney Cox could still be in the show. Yep. See, I, you have that great. That's a good perspective to have there, John. <laughs> um, uh, CF confirms who yes, the discs were also in 2000X. Um and uh, T. Bonner says I'm quite wanting to customize my, the Revelation He-Man figure into an 87 doll. It's pretty good. I mean, yeah, I can kind of see, 
you, you probably could do it. You probably mm -hmm. could do it. That's a pretty good buck for that. Um, bring the cosmic key back and play six synth tunes. I mean, if Gwildor shows up, if they can, if they can make Orko a really compelling story, arguably one of the most compelling stories in these five episodes. Do you do you think, John, that in the next five they could make Gwildor a compelling character? I do. I think Gwildor could be the Yoda that can bring the whole crew back to present day Eternia. You know, we can get King Grayskull, Wondar. Wow. You know, he will he will have the cosmic key. He'll be keeping it secret for that one time that he needs to break it out. Yeah, to yeah. go de to defeat Skelegod. Mm hmm Ooh. Yes, yes, a hundred percent. Oh man, what if? Yeah, what if all the champions came back to defeat Skelgot? That'd be dope. That'd be. And really they need the cosmic key, and it'll play the tune of the original cartoon. Oh, whoo! That's fire. That's straight fire. All right, we need to be consultants on this. <laughs> oh, man. Um. Anywho, all right. So there you go. Uh, again, I think. Any any new Motu is good if you just again just take take a step back and look at all of the Masters of the Universe stuff that we have gotten in a short span of time. Really, about this time last year, we were getting our first Motu Origins figures at retail. The first, mm -hmm. and look at all we have gotten since then. I mean, how many Origins? Five waves of figures. Yeah, uh, Castle Gray Skull, Wind Raider, uh, Land Shark. The the cats, the revelation figures, wave one, were and uh, just got the first half of Motu Revelation. We're gonna get another uh, cartoon show, and there's more toys to come. So that's crazy. That's zero to sixty kind of uh, level for a franchise that has been pretty dormant outside of a online only kind of niche collector toy. Which again. Motu Classics is amazing. I, I was in. I bought damn near every figure over 10 years or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. That's very, that was very niche and online only. So really, it's been nearly 20 years since we've had the focus and, and the uh, quantity and the attention that Motu has gotten this past year. So I think even if you didn't like Revelation, I think the, the Halo effect and all of the things that, that we have gotten that that wouldn't have probably exist otherwise i think is still a positive yep exactly exactly and speaking of stuff that we have gotten wave two of motu revelation uh the, we got our first pictures john i am doubly pumped did you i you got uh, uh, gary got you all of the um the figures correct yep uh, and I have to give a shout out and thanks to uh, Brad, who I'm pretty sure Brad got them for me. Um, it must have all hit around the same time. So I saw some people comment that Wave 1 figures uh, still haven't, uh, or they still haven't gotten the Wave 1 figure. So hopefully it comes soon. Uh, for us in North Carolina, I think elsewhere, you know, following the the Motu collector groups, um, they, they have the similar big end caps that they had for Motu Origins at Walmart. Um, and that's how they finally hit uh, in our area. The Skelegod and Battle Cats have been target. Um, but the, you know, the, the He-Man, Skeletor, Moss Man, and Evil Lynn uh, have been hitting Walmarts in a pretty big end cap. Other than that, it hasn't really been widespread. Um, so we'll see. Uh, Riley Bob says, how many seasons of Revelation are they planning on doing? Would the quasi blowback affect any future? You know, the thing with streaming services is they don't care if everybody hates it, everybody loves it. They just care if you watch it. So if people are hate watching it and the streams are coming in, then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's a horribly reviewed movie. Like HBO Max has had a lot of success with just, they've been putting a lot of like Space Jam I'm sorry, the new Space Jam, terrible. <laughs> terrible, wasn't good. But a lot of people are watching it, so HBO doesn't care, or Warner Bros. doesn't care, because they got the eyes on the set. So if that's the case for Motu, whether people are hate-watching it or like-watching it, 
Um, they don't care. They don't discern between the two just as long as people are watching it. So I think if that happens, hopefully uh, Revelation will do well enough. Yeah. Yeah. I think the proof is in the pudding when a show gets canceled on like ABC or Fox and mm-hmm. Netflix picks it up for another season. Mm-hmm. So that it doesn't matter to them. It doesn't matter to them ratings. It, mm-hmm. That doesn't, that does not matter. They'll take a show that's in the dumper and then put it, you know, make another season of it to try and keep it going. They did the same thing with um designated survivor. Yeah. Yeah. Old key for Sutherland. Um, uh, Bryman's uh, totally awesome collection says, I thought I heard Kevin Smith say there would be more on his live stream. I believe the second half is hitting October 28th or somewhere around there. I think I saw the dates uh, come in. Um, but, uh, but yeah. So, um, wait, you're going after Space Jam 2 now, Jay? Trying to get more thumbs down? <laughs> uh, I, listen, I went into it with an open heart and mind. Didn't like it. That's just... That's just <laughs> <laughs> oh man all right so wave two beast man tila spike or and man at arms so for the beast man figure they went with the kind of post-apocalyptic look of beast man which i dug but is are we disappointed it's this version and not the more classic look because it seems like it's a bit of pick here pick there which version we're getting in this wave because tila and beastman are the post-apocalyptic looks and then the man at arms and spike or uh, are the kind of the pre-apocalypse pre-death of he-man and, and skeletor looks mm-hmm. what, what's your thoughts here on the choice and look of beastman there could have been a really quick solve with this mm-hmm. give them two heads and just the the armor that collar thing that slips over and have that sort of um, the loincloth, whatever mm-hmm. you want to call that smock yeah. thing, removable. You would have two yeah. proper Beastman figures in one box. That's Easy solve. Out. That's actually a really good point. Because I, we didn't, I don't think we necessarily need these extra hands. Maybe use no. some of that classic and tooling to give us another head and just new uh, and swappable armor. You're right. That would have done it. Mm-hmm. That would have done it. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Uh, and I think Caesar is probably calling out the obvious. Yeah, but now they can't sell us two figures. Yes, true. But I think for all of us uh, um, apprehensive, concerned, whatever, toy collecting fans, we know that we never know how many waves you're going to get. Mm-hmm. So uh, this is a beast man slot. How quick until we get back to another beast man slot? If they're playing this like Origins, then I'm not worried because we're going to get like 17 variants of beast man by <laughs> next year. Yeah. If, if this is on the origin schedule, that other beast man is already made. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I think that's a good cause. So th- that's the, out of all this, this was one that was a little bit disappointing to me just because if I had to choose between the two looks, I think I would have rather had the, the more classic looking beast man, even though I, yeah. I did like this design, but it's a little, it's just a loincloth, essentially, and some face paint. It's not as compelling of a look for me. Yep. This this is just, if I have, you know, this in my collection, I would mm-hmm. look at it and say that's just another um, of the same species or, this, you know, the same faction as Beastman. Yep. It's, it's not Beastman, but it's his brother or, you know, whatever. Yeah, uh, PDF says, what's the price point on these? Uh, it is in comics for probably, yeah, 20 bucks. I think Walmart is $19.99. And uh, Justin says, is this the new Beast Man? Uh, is this Beast Man a new mold? Looks like it. I mean, it's uh, the thing with the Moss Man, like the Moss Man having it in hand and compared to what this one looks like in box. Uh, because, you know, historically, Moss Man and Beast Man share the same buck. Uh, that doesn't seem to be the case here because this beast man looks much bulkier than the moss man that we got in wave two. Like uh, the shoulders, everything, the fur, it all looks way uh, bulkier than the moss man. So I think this is a new sculpt. All right, let's move along here to man at arms. And this one, I'm kind of a little bit bummed we didn't get a bit more of the post-apocalyptic look. 
Because I thought mm-hmm. the the kind of old man Duncan looked badass. I thought he looked really cool. Yeah. Even though I do also, I actually also really like this look. This, I think, is the figure of the way for me because I do love the way this one's looking in box. But I did also, it's like kind of like a catch 22 between the two. I would have been fine either way. Uh, but this, I mean, just the paint details and everything, this thing looks fantastic. What's your thoughts here? Yeah, um, same thing. It looks, it's a great looking figure. Mm-hmm. I I wish they did the opposite. I wish we got uh, a vintage style Beastman mm-hmm. and newer style uh, Duncan. <laughs> This is a great looking figure, but I thought the new Duncan, you know, aged, bearded, yeah, you know, grizzled. Mm-hmm. That was, you know, that one would have been great with the yeah. big shoulder cannon. Yes. Oh man. Because did we we didn't even see um Duncan use his mace. No, he he kind of there was a neat little scene where one of the motherboard people yeah and they had him they had like that robotic mace and he ripped it off the silver one mm-hmm. yeah so that I, was, I, yeah. I thought that was fun but yeah. you're right it didn't really otherwise didn't um at least you know post-apocalyptic use the uh, hand cannons and the big over the shoulder cannon uh which was awesome yep yeah this looks very 2000x to me this figure if mm-hmm. if 2000x figures had great articulation this looks like uh 2000 x man at arms Mm -hmm. but um uh comic says looks very motu classics to me the paint detail looks very classics like all of these kind of accented more silvery uh colors on the armor and stuff like that a lot of paint apps on this figure just in this box if it turns out this way retail a lot of paint apps a lot of love into this which is cool but we already have one in classics that's really cool and i think having the grizzled jaded uh duncan is something we don't have on our shelves yet and i think but again i i'm i'm re- i think this looks awesome definitely going to get it yep absolutely uh cobb i think is hitting the nail on the head here they should have uh, should have extra heads instead of six hands i agree if there's one criticism i have of the figure so far is I don't need as many hands they gave me. They have like a half open hand and a kind of closed hand. I'm just like I, I don't, I don't need this many hands. Just two hands is fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just the basic something that can hold a weapon mm-hmm. is good. I, I feel like Ricky Bobby. I just I, I don't, I don't know. What to do <laughs> I don't. <laughs> like, it's like somewhere at, at Mattel. I was like, I just hear they really like as many hands as possible. How many hands we have? Like, uh, how about 15 hands? Sold. <laughs> Better make it 16. We need an even number. He's got two <laughs> arms, you know. For it, 15, just one extra left. <laughs> <laughs> Nick said, what has four hands and only one weapon? This, 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 this guy. <laughs> <laughs> they should call him man at hands oh <laughs> wait i have a dremel why am i not using it hold on now there we go oh my god anyway <laughs> uh <laughs> i ran and duncan's mace is impressive it's uh ew. i heard size doesn't matter but it is an impressive mace <laughs> All right, all right. Let's uh, let's move along here. Uh, Spikor, who and Spiker was who Skeletor uh, used the um, yeah the uh, uh, it was like the ch- ch- shaping staff. Shaping staff. Uh, so I technically, I guess, didn't make an appearance in the show, but kind of did. But yeah. we have Spikor here, and. A little, we I think we talked about when the lease of uh, the least the list was leaked and Spiker was on there. And we talked, I know I sh- I think we shared shared the same opinion that out of all them, or probably if you had to do a top five most disappointing classics figures, Spiker was on that list just because it very much just looked like the vintage one and had kind mm-hmm. of the armor that made the spikes. And we were hopeful that the Mot- uh, Motu Revelation Masterverse version would kind of right some of those wrongs 
and give us an actual real spiky, something cool, something different. Kind of what they did with Moss Man, which is a different take and it looks awesome. But instead, it seems like they just went with the same classics route. It's just armor that's the spikes, a rubbery mm -hmm. armor shield uh, over the normal buck. And uh, we have 32 hands uh, in this point. <laughs> <laughs> but uh w so i'm a little disappointed by this because it's not that much different than the classics one but john what's your thoughts here um exactly it's not that much different if you are missing him from classics true per perfect it's it's you know better than paying a hundred dollars for a classic spike or that cl his mace club looks identical to the uh classics version mm -hmm. i'm not real big on his trident mm -hmm. as it's you know like the 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 red block of it was always pretty much just the size of you know it just went on the end of his wrist but it was always small because the trident extended out whereas here they just look like they made the trident very long and not like on a you know like extension mm -hmm. so i'm not really digging that really surprised that we getting we're getting spike or in wave two when he was such a it's just a a short note of a character yeah technically they didn't even show up i mean this feels like almost like a vintage style slot to me where sure it's saying motu revelation but it just seems like here's a six inch scaled spike or fig figure right and if right. you miss it in classics great but if not eh, uh toy gallery <laughs> setted rubber armor for protection <laughs> That's what she said on this thing. <laughs> Just happens again and again and again. Uh, <laughs> I get it. I like they, you know, they're they're trying to do two bad guys, two good guys. They mm -hmm. should have given us. They really should have given us Triclops, somebody that had screen time. I know Triclops we're getting a big essential character. Yeah, I mean, I know we're getting, um, you know, a deluxe Triclops at some point from that leaked list mm -hmm. but this would have been better off leaked on in wave three or four <laughs> true very true um and i think maybe has a good call here maybe he's got a bigger role in the next five episodes that could be the case but if so i i think i have a bone to pick just with whoever decides the selections and how they come out because scale of god is a huge spoiler mm -hmm. huge spoiler so much I wasn't for you because like towards the end of the episode, I was like, well, Skella God's not here. When the heck is Skella God coming out? And then as they're doing the like Adam has the power, so I was like, okay, everything seemed happy. I was like, yeah, but Skella God still needs to show up. So can't turn out good. And of course it didn't turn out good. But did did you kind of have the same thoughts running through your head, John? Uh, at the yeah. end of the episode. Yeah. yeah, it's it's the equivalent of um when episode one be prior to even seeing a trailer. And mm -hmm. Hasbro released the Stap speeder with the battle droid. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was in a nice window box. Yeah. It's like, all right, everybody, this is this is what's going to be in the next movie, you know, and then so on and so on. This is going to be a major, you know, droid character for uh -huh. the next 20 years. Here you go. You haven't even seen the trailer yet. <laughs> Everybody's been clamoring for Star Wars for forever seeing scale God, knowing what scale of God becomes and what he does. Yeah. This should have been, he should have been wave two or three. God, oh, Triclops. Oh, clap the third. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Monsters, dinosaurs, and things like that. Jerry Kevin Smith said last night, He-Man is coming back and has a seven minute fight with scale God in episode seven, part two. And He-Man gets to finally use his battle axe. Yes, if there's one disappointment I have with the Revelation He-Man is no battle axe. I think in general, most uh, He-Man toys, I have him holding his battle axe as opposed to the power sword. Um, so excited about that news. Uh, Gamaliel. Merman without his chest armor looks weird. I want a merman, but complete greed. I think it's just the Kevin Conroy of it was kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anywho, 
Uh, Space Cowboy toy spoilers are really bittersweet pain. I yeah, and I know it happens, Ryan, but it's just like Skell God was a big spoiler. And if you had the Faker, Faker is the next kind of deluxe figure slot. I would have just flipped it if possible. But again, who knows? Maybe the production got delayed because of COVID, all this kind of stuff. And maybe they had this grand plan and it's a lot of moving pieces and they just didn't work out the way it meant to be. And so be it. It is what it is. And for most people that aren't toy geeks like us and know every bit of toy news out there, and even we don't know every bit of toy news out there, uh, they probably weren't spoiled. So maybe the, the, the population that gets spoiled on something like Skill of God being released in wave one is not a big big deal for maybe 95% of the viewers of the show. Um, so anyway, all right. Let's move along. <laughs> Murbat poke haggle. <laughs> all right. Let's, uh, the last one, Tila. Uh, let's see. So we already saw this figure. I think uh, Sarah Michelle Geller posted the picture a couple days ago, right? Three or four days ago. Yep. Her with the figure. Mm -hmm. It looks okay. The face sculpt seems not quite as sharp as the evil Lynn, which I thought was dead on. Uh, but it still looks really good. I so, But again, this evil Lynn is so free. It, I think evil Lynn's still my favorite. Even though she didn't really have the helmet off all that much, but really dug this look. Um, and Lena, Lena Hetty of of Game of Thrones fame, perfect for that role. But thoughts here, John, on uh, the Tila figure. Um, I I like her second most after Man at Arms in this wave. Mm -hmm. I want to see what it looks like out of the package, you know, because obviously the the grainy pictures and the the face sort of looking downwards in mm -hmm. the package it's hard to hard to tell how well the sculpt will be um but at least she comes with three accessories and only one extra set of hands mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they, they got something right <laughs> and she doesn't even need those hands but i know it <laughs> maybe <laughs> Maybe just somebody over Mattel's like a hands guy. I don't know. <laughs> or hands lady. I don't know. I don't know. Be inclusive. But um, because like look at this open hand. Like, what are you gonna do with this open hand? There's nothing you can do with that. Um, it's like a it's like a slap evil in hand. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, I, I, I have a pile of the hands somewhere in this office. Uh they I they will go in a little ziploc bag and never be to use again. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I dig the figure. It's mm -hmm. you know, if if this figure was in a you know a a, a bin of of stuff and you didn't know it was a He Man figure, it would be a cool looking figure. You know, it's just like a uh, something from a line of bar barbarians. It's a it's a good figure. Yeah, I I really dig the figure. I like the look again. The head sculpting is a little off in this picture, but you know, a lot of the early pictures of Wave One, the head sculpts looked off and. I like remember how bad uh, He Man looked on the those. Yeah, we we really ragged on He Man oh, when he was first shown. Terrible on first glance, and I actually I really really love the way this He Man figure looks. I really dig it. Um, so this this might be the same thing once we have it in hand. Uh, I think uh, it's Dan uh, Taylor has a pretty good objective thought here. I think it's to emulate the original toys, and all of them have like one gripping hand, one display hand. True. Very true, and especially like Tila. Oh, had it had that useless uh, hand doing this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and so did Evil Lynn. Yeah, and it, it was literally shaped like that, and then you yep. the shield on it. And the it did nothing. The most useless hand sculpt of all time. Even if it was like sideways, it could be a karate chop. But it wasn't. <laughs> no, it was. It was... <laughs> I have to be careful. I can't raise it all the way because it's be on YouTube. You get a I lot more dislikes. I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. <laughs> but it was just this weird little hand. Ugh, it's awful. Propose hand. There you go. Kiss the hand. <laughs> Lady offering her hand to a gentleman. <laughs> uh, this supposed to be a spell casting hand. Well, there you go. What, what are you? What spells are you casting doing this? 
anyway, it's fine. <laughs> I'm not going to critique a sculptor who's did this 40 years ago. It's fine. But uh, here you go. You have a slightly open hand and a closed fist. But, you know, let me know. Send an email or maybe comment here. Do Does anybody in the chat, do you like having, you know, 17 different hands? For me as a toy collector, because uh, even the Super 7 Ultimates like TMNT, they come with literally eight hands a figure. Six of them get put in a bin somewhere and I never see them again. Yeah. Chances are I keep the hand on them that they came with. Unless it's closed. Yeah. Yep. And it just, that's it. They'll never be touched again. Mm hmm. Uh, CF, I do agree with the Christmas. Katila overacted when she found out that He Man had come. I agree. You know, I, I kind of get the angle they're going for, but it almost seemed like to drive the story, kind of. Um, and even more so because it seemed like they still haven't resolved that, which I was kind of bummed. He was like, Dude, Adam's dead in the afterlife. Like, let's resolve this because you may never see him again. And she still didn't want to do it, I don't think, really. So hopefully that gets resolved. I would assume they resolve whatever that is in the next five episodes. <laughs> also, I want spare feet. I have a Tarantino-esque foot finish. <laughs> uh, uh, comic says I prefer the best paint apps possible above all, above all else. Then after that, I prefer extra weapons, accessories over hands and heads. Uh, would rather have extra heads. Agreed. I, I, and especially because I think you made a good point about the the Beast Man. If you put an extra head in that and some different armor, you have two different versions of Beast Man like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see. The T Partner says the only figure, figures I switch hands on frequently are my Street Fighter figures. There you go. There you go. So uh, wave two is look from these pictures. At least I think there's some really solid ones here. I think man at arms and Tila are my tops. Beast man, I think is a really good figure. I just wish we had the classic look to go with him as well. And spike or is last for me on this because he is a straight up class. He's marginally different from the classics version. Yeah. And it, yeah, and I, I, even though this is also similar to classics, it's different enough for me that I still really dig it. Um, and yeah, so Spiker, eh, Spiker gets the official. <laughs> Better than that, pretty solid. <laughs> All right, more Mo2 stuff. This is a Mo2 heavy show because let me share the old screen arena here. Mondo dropping a Revelation Skeletor and also doing this fantastic looking vintage, vintage style Scareglow. Now, these are expensive figures. What are these, like 150, 200 bucks? Yeah, I think they, they start at like 180 ish. And like, then depending on accessory count and exclusives, they go up from there. And they're big. They're like at least 12 inches, if not bigger. They're large. Yeah. Yeah. There's it's a six inch scale figure or six inch six one six scale figure. Yeah. Usually come with a ton of accessories. Um, and they've been doing it for a little while now, at least a few years. They've been doing Motu figures. Yep. But the revelation one looks great. It looks great. And the cape is better than the, the material one. <laughs> Not that hard. And, but I, but I, I probably won't get it. I mean, I, I don't have room for 12-inch scale. I, I barely have room for the Motu figures I have now. I don't have room for 12-inch, and it's expensive. But this scare glow, though, for the first time has me like, maybe I should get one of these Mondo figures. John, what's your thoughts here on these reveals? Yeah, um, I've been teased by the mondo the last one mm -hmm. that i contemplated buying was hordak but mm -hmm. i wanted the mondo exclusive and that sold out mm -hmm. it sold out scare glow fast it was ridiculous yeah um but now this scare glow this one i want and really it's only because it looks like the vintage figure it looks yeah. like an upscaled vintage figure it's it's mm -hmm. outside the the line that they've been doing where they try and get them to look a little bit more 
um, with some more realism. Mm-hmm. But this just looks like a big scare glow from the from the eighties. Mm-hmm. But I do think it's going to be a tough one to get. I think it's going to be real tough to get. Oh, probably. It probably settled immediately. Which again, I'd be okay with. It. I don't need to drop. I already have a seven hundred dollar Optimus Prime that I got to find money for, and apparently four hundred dollar Galactus. So, oh, it, boy, it won't be the end of the world if I can't get it. Uh, but yes, uh, it, this it none has tempted me yet. Even though they've done amazing stuff, people in the comment section agree with you on the Hordak being amazing, um, as well as the Merman looked really good. I agree with that as well. And again, going to Comic Con every year, they would have it in their display case and they would show it. And and the He Man and the Turtles figures have tempted me every now and then. This is the most tempted I have been, or their Batman animated series stuff. I've been tempted, but th- this one for the first time, I'm like, Ugh. Mm. yeah, but this is it sounds this right. is a tough one. This is a real tough one mm-hmm. with so much other masters coming out. I can't do it. It's gonna. It's just too much. Oh, uh, Master Blaster! So this is a fair call out, Master Blaster. Don't have room for Scareglow, but room for Galactus. I'll tell you why. Because I am a sucker for displaying things and displaying a scene. And Scareglow, it'll just be a big Scareglow. I have no context for it to exist anywhere in my toy room. And if you've watched either of my toy room tours. Hopefully you see there's a sense of like a display with play sets and, and figures and things happening. And Galactus fits into that style where I could have a Galactus and the Fantastic Four kind of, and it would be a display kind of thing, much like Sentinel as well. I could have my 90s X-Men around that and it can be a display. And I like the different scales to, to give my display more depth. That's why I love play sets because it just it gives the display more depth for me because I prefer to have a bit more um, dynamics in the display versus and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just this is my personal preference versus people that have kind of just the this tiered steps and you have all the figures all tiered up and they're all going across. I totally cool if that's your thing. But for me personally, I prefer to kind of have different scaled figures and sizes and stuff and kind of having it all displayed out. And that's Galactus is perfect for that versus just a one-off 12 inch scare. Girl. Like, where do I put that? Where does that exist in my display? That's for, that's my perspective. What's your thoughts there, John? Oh. Are you there? Oh, I think I lost you. Hello. Hello. Mm. John, if you have to drop back out and drop, come back in, Maybe get that good internet coming back for you. Oh, he froze. It's a good look though on him. Let's let's, let's make him bigger. Hold on. <laughs> He's, he had to drop out. Anyway, okay. John is frozen in time. John was banished to the shadow zone. John froze. It's been a while since we had a John freeze uh, on the show. Uh, anywho, uh, but yeah. So that that's my personal perspective on that but again it's a fair call out it's a scare grow <laughs> uh yes do it <laughs> all right uh so oh john's back hopefully oh there's no no video on him yet hopefully it comes back in uh so let's see here i did oh hold on let me show you john <laughs> John got roasted out of this. Oh, come on now. Come on now. Unhinged from time. John is scared by Scareglow. Mondo Fisto. Mm. Are, you, are you still trying to come back in? Well, we'll hopefully he loads back in and the internet comes back for John. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Uh, yeah, it is it is true. It is true. Uh, I wish they would release them more often. But again, I'm I'm fine. I'm fine. Jay is practicing for the blip. Oh, my God. Please not. Please not. Let's not have that happen. Well, before John comes back, there's at least one that I wanted his perspective on before I go on. But this one, at least I will share. Really excited. I don't know why I'm excited. And maybe it's just a byproduct of... Let me go back to... Was just regular? I don't know. Let me do... That's weird. 
really excited for the uh, Mezco Dick Tracy. And, you know, let me know in the chat. I don't know if this is like a weird byproduct of the 1990 film for me as a kid. But, you know, if for those that lived in that era of the, you know, 80s, 90s, you know, Dick Tracy was promoted like the next Batman. And it was everywhere. And, I, you know, as a kid, like, I don't know, I just fell hook, hook, line and sinker for it because they kind of re started re-airing the old cartoons. And um, I just really just fell in love with Dick Tracy, got all the Playmates toys. And uh, but if there was one thing that really disappointed me with those Playmate toys, he didn't have the yellow jacket and he didn't quite look like the Dick Tracy that we saw in the film. And so. Whenever somebody uh, takes a stab at kind of a more classic full featured Dick Tracy, my interest peaks because I don't think I've ever gotten one that really satisfied completely uh, that Dick Tracy look that has irked me since the Playmates toy line in 1990. It looks like John uh, is back. Uh, I don't know if you heard what I've been saying, John, but uh, this Mezco drop for Dick Tracy looks awesome and i think i is this finally the dick tracy figure to right the wrongs of the playmates toy because i again just being a kid if i had a toy geeks streaming tv channel i would be complaining about how that playmates dick tracy did not have the yellow coat uh so is this figure righting the wrongs of that original playmates line it looks like it it really looks like it um that face sculpt and how they, they got the nose perfect. Mm -hmm. They got everything perfect on this figure. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that there's, there was, um, there was another company. It was, I can't remember what, what the name of the company was. They were, mm -hmm. they ended up kind of burning a lot of people. Yeah. Um, because they did, they did a, a, the max an image comics, max figure. Um, they did a, I think they did a scud figure. Mm -hmm. And there was like a line of Dick Tracy figures yeah. where, you know, black and white versions and, and yep. yeah. a bunch of others. Mm -hmm. But even those weren't that great. Mm -hmm. This one is going to make up for all of those right. companies, all yeah. of them. Because I, I got that one, too. And it was, yeah, agree. Yeah, Shocker Toys. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Um, and yeah, I uh, absolutely so I, I think I think I need this. I think this one's going to be joining the collection uh, for sure. Um, Nick Jones has a great point. The Dick Tracy cartoon six was very racist. <laughs> a lot of cartoons <laughs> were very racist, um, and it's very much true. That I don't know if that would air today if there if, if it would be enough to make a, a show that people could watch uh, after they cut out all of the pretty horrible racism. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm I'm actually really it, it seems simple and maybe it's just Dick Tracy is not, you know, if you have the tier levels, Dick Tracy is not even not even maybe a top three tier character. If you think of like all of geekdom today. But for me, like I'm I'm really excited about this figure. Yeah, it looks good. And, and it's a good idea to have flat top coming out alongside of him. So, mm -hmm. You know, such a recognizable. Yes. Uh, Dick Tracy rogues gallery. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Really pumped for this for Mezco. Um, I was gonna give a shout out for Toy Shiz, friend of the channel. I assume most people here follow Toy Shiz, but there you go. All right. This next bit here. You know, people were concerned that Motu Origins would be ending. And I believe Scott Knight, like Toy Guru, posted or made a video saying as such. But uh, from leaked lists that we got, it doesn't seem to be the case. Motu Origins is going to keep going strong. But Masters of the WWE-verse is coming to an end and is being replaced by the WWE Superstars toy line, seemingly using the same buck system as Motu Origins and uh, Masters of the WWE-verse. And uh, I know a lot of people, fans of the Masters of the Universe, are sad. But uh, I, for one, I think these look like a lot of fun. Very Remco style, straight up wrestling figures from Mattel. 
But what's your thoughts on this news of the end of Mo2 WWE verse and this new toy line? Um, I think the end of the Mo2 WWE verse is logical because yeah. it's probably, you know, the thing about the development team trying to think of what accessories that matches mas masters of the universe mm -hmm. could they coincide with a WWE character to make sure that it's going to be worth making new tooling just for accessories that will work with a WWE character. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they've already rehashed some characters like, you know, ultimate warrior has mm -hmm. had more than one um, figure yep. from that series. So I think just focusing on straight up wrestling, like honky tonk, man, what could they do with honky tonk, man? True. Mixed with the masters of the universe accessory or, mm -hmm. uh, armor or whatever the case so i think switching this and still keeping the bucks keeping the scale mm -hmm. everything will work well you know the the tooling for them will work out a lot better mm -hmm. you know i think it'll it'll broaden the collector base because i'm sure a lot of collectors didn't care for the the masters of the wwe universe because it was more fantasy it was you know it wasn't their wrestling figures mm -hmm. they didn't they didn't need that crossover but now yeah. that they see these and they'll they'll go well with those in scale with those re retro hasbro retro collection ones you know they're a little bit taller i think but they'll they'll still look well together um the the honky duck man i think looks the best out of these mm -hmm. honky the duck man songster. <laughs> uh but I, I think the Ric Flair looks cool. He definitely has the, because that Remco uh, Ric Flair definitely has that feel. And I love the Hollywood Hogan because we've gotten like Remco Hogan's, but this is a Hollywood Hogan, which is really cool. But, you know, I think, uh, you know, Gary and I were talking about this news at the NC uh, Toy Swap. And uh, he said there are still opportunities in the Motu WE line like uh, King Kong. Uh, or King Bundy, King Kong Bundy, King Kong Bundy, yep. Yeah. As King Randor. Oh no, his Gary's idea was Jerry the King Lawler as King Randor. That's it. I did, see, I messed it up. I told him to remind me, Gary. You're supposed to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> but Jerry the King Lawler, King Randor would have been perfect. They missed that. Exactly. They, they really missed the boat on that. So they should have done. I totally. This was Gary's idea. I'm not stealing it. Gary said this, and uh, I think that should have been done before they switched the lines. I think that's uh, that was a missed opportunity. Um, yeah. and I and I also think you know if there's another bummer, selfishly as a Motu Origins fan, I'm trying to see if I can pull it out here. Who said it? I want to make sure I give credit where credit is due. Where is it? Here we go. Cobweb, no more spare Motu parts. That was kind of the neat thing about the WWE line was there were the accessories for the most part, while they were influenced and inspired by Motu, they were slightly different than Motu Origins were. So you had some kind of cool different accessories that you could put on your Motu Origins figure. So Again, it's kind of not a very efficient way to collect another toy line. So you have extra accessories for the a completely different toy line. But still, I think that was a really fun part about it. And this new line doesn't really seem to offer much of anything to be shared with the Motu Origins line. Exactly. But ew. I do think, you know, they'll get more wrestling collectors, probably just having basic wrestling figures mm -hmm. um although i think i don't know if they're going to want to pay 15 bucks for them because mm -hmm. that's i think the basic figures just wwe basic not elite but just basic i think they're ten dollars a piece mm -hmm. um but they're very you know they're much more realistic looking they mm -hmm. they just have less articulation mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll just have to wait and see how well these do. <laughs> yeah, Andy Kaufman. That'd be <laughs> awesome. That'd be awesome. 
Uh, man at arms is the most overused parts in the line. So many tiny maces laying around. No, that's fair. Um, some people say WWE doesn't want to pay Mattel royalties for the Motu parts of the figures. Are they paying royalties for that? I didn't realize that. We'll see. Hmm. We shall see. All right. That's the news because we we have some toy hauls to talk about. But before we even talk about the toy hauls, I think I mentioned on the Friday show. But the scare glow drop on Thursday this past week. It was a stressful experience. John and I talked about it on the show. But Scareglow was revealed as the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. It was going to drop on Mattel Creations a week later. Less than a week later. This past Thursday at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 9 uh, a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And... Uh, I think we both uh, people were asking in the chat, like you should do a live stream while you're ordering it. And uh, I think <laughs> both of us wisely said, eh, it's probably not a good idea. You don't want to see a grown man crying. Cause that was me on Thursday, uh, mainly because, you know, uh, Zach's been home from school. It's like his time off doing his track. And I can't remember he needed it was like lunchtime or he wanted something. And you know, just like, like you kind of get in the rim, rhythm of things and you know, it's like, okay, 12 o'clock, I got to get on the computer, I got to order this thing. But he asked for this thing and I went and did it. And then I was like, and then Caesar texted me and he's like, oh, uh, it's 12. Did you get your, I already got mine. I was like, dang it, I completely forgot. So I run downstairs to the office. This computer that I use for the live streams is a hardwired connection to a gigabit internet connection I get over a gig up and down speeds. So this was my my station to try and get it. I get on the computer at 1202, 1201, whatever it was. I go on the Mattel Creations. It's still there. I add it to my cart. And I do the CAPTCHA system, prove that I'm a real human being. And they, they have this kind of ticket master line waiting thing, which I thought was pretty cool. But by the time that little waiting was done, when it was 12.04, I did not get the scare glow. It was sold out. My cart was empty. And my heart was empty. <laughs> <laughs> but then my good friend John, I think, texted me five minutes later or so. I don't know, whatever it was. Asking, did you get the scare glow? And I was like, nah, I missed it. Oh well, they're gonna do a normal release, so it's fine. I had already, I had already accepted the fact that I was not gonna get it. I was screaming to the heavens. <laughs> My soul was a pure sense of. <laughs> But John, you are my hero. Not the hero I deserve. Wait, not the hero. The hero I deserve, but the hero. Not the hero I need, but the hero I deserve. Yeah, not the hero, like that. the hero I deserve. Uh, John was able to get two scare glows. And he's given one to me. So John, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are my hero. <laughs> Round of applause for you. <laughs> this... This ending does is not have a tragic ending. And uh, so I will still be able to get a scare glow. And the moral of this story is to look out for your fellow toy geeks. You never know what might happen. Mm -hmm. uh, John, thank you. So that was my experience. John, what was your, clearly yours was more successful because uh, you were able to, to nab uh, two scare glows. Okay. So I don't know if it makes a difference, <laughs> um, but I went on the Mattel Creations website at 9 a.m. our time. And I just and I just left that window open. And I just let the ticker go because I just wanted to I didn't I didn't know if it was going to matter if you were already on that site, mm -hmm. if they were going to have a, you know, just like their ticket master sort of system. Once you added something to your cart, I didn't mm -hmm. know how it was going to work because there was no definitive, you know, page to, to wait at so i just waited and i just left it open so when i got to the you know the, the screen automatically changed when the time rolled over mm -hmm. and 
I saw Scareglow, threw him in the cart, waited in line, and it was super easy. Wow. Wow. Um, well, uh, Jim or Mitch, John, the hero, gets to go to Preternia now. You definitely deserve a Preternia, <laughs> my friend. The Toy <laughs> Geeks Preternia. You have achieved said status. I will go into the dirt and disintegrate and become nature. You will get uh, to uh, experience Valhalla. <laughs> um, Riley Bob, as Dave Grohl once sang, there goes my <laughs> hero. Watch him all the scare glow. <laughs> I'll get a copyright flag on that. Uh, <laughs> John Mann. Fighter of the sold out man. Ah! <laughs> oh boy. Oh my. Yeah. Yeah, I, exactly. Make again, lean on your friends. Uh and and uh, John came up big time. Uh did the same as John and got mine. True, <laughs> Phineas. John kept uh, camped out like the Black Friday Best Buy people. <laughs> uh, I haven't sat in an uncomfortable camping chair in my office to do it. Uh, now that shows my up, there's new TMNT stuff on Toy News Eye. Let's check. Oh, this is a live show. I got the internet. I can look right now. Let's see. All right, here we go. Toy News Eye. Let's see. Before I forget, yeah. uh, <laughs> we were. Talked about uh, doing a live stream of the ordering process. Mm -hmm. Mad Hatter did. Oh, nice! How did so it go? Could, he he tried to order from Mattel Creations, NECA, and Storm Collectibles live all at the same time. All the same. Was he successful? Um, he got. Uh, what did he get? He got a Scare Glow, the the NECA Channel Six, and um, his Storm Collectibles. Um, what is the I can't remember what it was. Not altered beast. Um, something else. He was he was successful on on some of it, but he screwed up the captcha first. So he, oh, no. he was, it was it was not it was not fun to watch. You could feel his 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 pain. See, that's why I wouldn't. But I, you know what, Mad Hatter, giving you kudos and props for doing that. Let's put yourself out there and mad respect for that. Yep. Um, for sure. Uh, <laughs> the man had ever gave me the worst anxiety ever. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's that's rough. All right, so clearly, uh, the internet is listening to my conversations. They're putting me all these Space Jam advertisements. <laughs> I'm good. I didn't like it. Internet, Facebook algorithm. I didn't like it. Leave me alone. Okay. So we <laughs> we we saw on the back of the images of those Playmates two packs uh, that. Triceratron and um, Shredder would be in these packs. And <laughs> I'm telling you, these first look at these figures uh, definitely get the official. <laughs> this looks like trash. Look at those exposed joints. I know the pins look are huge. Shredder, look, pins. At that, look at that head sculpt. That's awful. The pins are huge. And that head, the Shredder head sculpt oh. looks just like. It looks like they took a toon shredder head from uh or not not oh. the toon shredder, uh the wacky wind up head and just plopped it on. This is I wanna throw what is this? What they what are these weapons? This is the most half ass figure and this playmates is really been coasting. And no more is it more apparent than there's finally new figures in eight years and they look like knockoffs. This is awful. <laughs> oh, uh, just wait till you see their Star Trek. And the weapons you give them are are the the the, <laughs> the crappy weapons from the 10 backs. And they're too small because this is a taller figure. <laughs> but his look at us. Shredder looks tiny compared to the tur the turtles are shorter than humans. Oh, that's terrible. What is going on at Playmates? Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. 
Wow. Oh my God. This is bad. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> uh, this isn't even five below. This isn't even a five below as Shredder. This is this is Dollar General. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Woo. This is, that is terrible. Wow. Playmates. Come and they, didn't, they didn't even give Triceraton new, uh, two uh, new guns. They're, they're repaints of his vintage ones. Uh, I, you know, here's the thing. I am from San Diego. And anybody that's friends with me knows I have kind of an absurd allegiance to the city of San Diego. I'm a diehard Padre fan. Anybody that's from San Diego, uh, that is successful from San Diego, like just there's something about being in San Diego, and we are like jack in a box. Like it, it, it just, it's just absurdly so, and I recognize that it's absurd the uh, the the pride that San Diegans have for San Diego things. Playmates is a San Diego company, and I have always held it in high esteem because it's a San Diego company. And so just just know my disdain for how far Playmates has fallen hurts so bad because this is trash. Just saying it. It's pretty bad. Terrible. Terrible. Uh, Playmates, you're better than this. You're better than this. I know you're better than this, and you can do better than this. Because this is, and I know people are going to buy it. And even, you know, and I, I, I make fun, and we have made fun of Playmates retreading figures over and over and over again. But I saw pictures of those, uh, of the vintage ones, the 10 back ones, and they're just in the same car. I was like, okay, God, I may still buy those because it just, it's so classic and it's so ingrained in my soul. The turtles are, but this is bad. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't want to try anymore. Don't want to try. Woo! I uh, mean, whoever gets paid design, it should be fine. I, I don't know. This is bad. It's, the scale, the scale is so bad. The turtles are short. They're maybe four feet tall if you scale to a six foot human. This Donnie dwarfs the shredder. <laughs> And it's not even a good shred. Like the head scope looks terrible. It's super small. Wow. The head doesn't even scale well with the rest of the body. Ooh. Agreed. I need to cancel this quick. This is bad. It's bad. Ooh. Anyway. All right. Toy hauls. John, I, I I feel sick now. Like I need to like I don't I need like a a, a, a rainbow sherbet to palate cleanse myself of what I just saw from Playmates. But okay, I'm gonna collect myself. John, I <laughs> had a really fun weekend toy hunting in Raleigh, North Carolina. There was the North Carolina Toy Swap. If you are in the area. Uh, give it a follow. They kind of do them all throughout the state. They're on Facebook, NC Toy Swap on Facebook, or North, North Carolina Underground Toy Swap. Um, and it, it's not really a toy show. It's kind of, you know, just kind of toy collectors coming in, setting up somewhere with tables and swapping stuff. If you follow me on Instagram at, at Geek Dad Life, you saw it this weekend. It was in a high school gym, which was pretty cool. Uh, a lot of the our friends, our mutual friends, John, were set up to sell or trade stuff at the Thing this weekend and uh, number one on my list for a while now has been that turbo man doll <laughs> from walmart and uh it it as i showed up there and i think it's been i i've been going to walmart gosh like every day for weeks now trying to find this stupid turbo man and the thing is is i have a vintage tiger one and i've talked about it on the show before but that was the one i really wanted and so i go into the hall this gym uh gary was there as well if he's here and uh he and i let it be known and you know people that watch the show like i, I kind of i have this very uh exclamatory way of saying things sometimes and i let it be known i was like i really want the turbo man 
<laughs> and I was really mad. There was no Turbo Mans to be seen. All these tables, it's very distinctive. There's no Turbo Mans, none, in the whole gymnasium in Clayton, North Carolina. And uh, so I was like, you know what? It's for the best. I don't need to spend any more money. It's fine. I made peace with it. So then it's going around seeing like Trey runs it, talking to him. And I can't remember who came up to me. It was either Jason from Cro-Mag Toys or it was Gary. Maybe both of them at the same time. But since I had exclaimed so much that I was disappointed, there was no uh, Turbo Mans. Turbo Men? Turbo <laughs> <laughs> toy swap. Uh, I mean, John John Parrish too was there. A lot of our friends were there, and uh, so like it's like they're running up to me after I'm walking around for like twenty minutes. Like, Jay, Jay, somebody has a Turbo Man. Do you remember that scene in Ghostbusters where Peter Venkman, like Dana Barrett, comes into the office, and then Peter Peter Venkman like perks up because there's a pretty woman, and he like runs from his office and he like leaps over the door of his little office there <laughs> to meet Dana Barrett. Mm -hmm. That was me when I heard there was a Turbo Man figure across the gymnasium. You Venkman the Turbo Man. I Venkman the Turbo Man. <laughs> because this gentleman had the Turbo Man doll. With the jetpack and the lasers and the boomerang, and he says, "It's turbo time." <laughs> Here's the problem: when you show that much excitement for a toy, is then the toy dealer will know <laughs> you're willing to pay. You're willing to pay, and you really want a figure. I literally, I swear to God, I think I flew to the other side of this gymnasium. I had lost all negotiating power <laughs> with this guy. Because he was like, what is this? What a geek. What an idiot running across the hall just to get a re-release of a toy he already has. But it didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Like it was, I, I got to I got to live uh, the the experience that Arnold and Sinbad had in Jingle All the Way, um, and so the guy was like, I was like, how much is it? And I I, I I was deflated because I knew I had given up all negotiating power. I was like, how much? I'm just like ready for the gut punch, and uh, he said sixty dollars. I think these retail for 35 bucks plus tax and everything. Yep. And um, I, 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 there was no sense in negotiating, so I paid the 60 bucks. But in my mind, $20 above what I would have paid at retail to not have to go to Walmart every single day, plus to get this thing that I had been literally for weeks going to Walmart every single morning after I dropped my kids off at school before work uh, to get the Turbo Man and the, what I have heard from Gary and you, John, when you have found them in retail, the box has been beat up. But mm -hmm. it's really nice. Because, again, I already have the figure. I really want it for the whole box package and everything. Uh, was worth the extra cost. So that was uh, that was my... Uh, there you go. <laughs> yes, very nice. Uh, I did find it this week destroyed yeah anywho uh <laughs> jay was saying to me. absolutely absolutely uh box again the box is in great condition uh jay Lee Parker with the kind of like missed out fire it was absurd i wish there was video like surveillance footage just so you can see an app a grown man skip across the gymnasium just trying to get to this toy to make sure nobody else got it um <laughs> so anyway uh <laughs> are you going to keep it sealed well here's the thing i really for the channel i really wanted to compare this figure to the original release because it looks in the box it looks darn near identical to the original one 
And in my original one, the electronics still work and everything. So I really would like to do an A-B comparison to this one for the channel. And it's like kind of something nice about doing this channel is, you know, you experience the thing and then it's gone. But like doing a video of it, it kind of lives on forever. So that that experience is always there. So I'm kind of curious to take it out and do an A-B test. But I don't know. And I think I could kind of put it back in the box so I could still have one like that's displayable in the box. So I don't know yet. But Funko, I don't know what kind of alchemy you pulled off to make this happen. <laughs> but speaking of Funko, Mike, our friend from Nerd Bombers, uh, was set up at the flea market. And, and you were still. And here's the thing. like We didn't organize it right because I was going to. Gary and I were going to the swap first and you were going to the flea market first. So I was like, ah, crap. I want to get to see John. I want to talk to him about uh, He-Man and stuff. But uh, so we, we went to the swap, Gary and I, and then we. We headed back to the flea market, and you were still there. This was like an hour later, so it was nice to be able to, to see you there. Um, but uh, I got the Fernando Tatis Jr. Uh, pop that just got released this month. Again, I'm a diehard Padre fan. I've been my whole life, and uh, we finally have a team that has a superstar like Tatis. First time since like Tony Gwynn. So uh, really pumped for this Tatis pop. Is up here, my little top teeth, top teeth cubby right here. Uh, and then also at Target, even though Mike had them, but I already got them at Target, uh, Wave 5 of Motu Origins dropped. So I got my Wave 5 figures uh, from there. So that was my toy. Halls. My toy and that faker is still unpunched, huh? Yeah, like it, it, it. they set him up just sitting on the shelf. So I got two. I got one to keep on punch to put in this little box, and then I got the other ones in a bag somewhere to do a video review eventually. Cool. All right. Did you get your way five from Mike? He had them all there this weekend. Um, I had Gary had already picked them up for me. Oh, nice, awesome. So he brought them all to the to the flea market for me. Nice. So that is my part of my hauls. Because I had already gotten the Evil Inn, um, you picked that up for me. I did, yeah. From Mike again from from uh, Nerd Bombers. So got the Fisto, yeah. Got the Faker, mm -hmm. Lords of Power, Merman, mm -hmm. and Evil Inn is over there. Haven't I haven't taken anything out of the package from any of these waves yet? No. God, uh, Faker. I don't know why. I just freaking love Faker so much. I've always loved Faker. He's kind of one of my top figures for me. This Faker looks so good. Yeah, especially having the vintage style head. Yes. Mm. So yeah, pumped for that. But what else I did get from Mike? Mm -hmm. I he I asked him if he if he ever does McFarlane figures, and he he doesn't just because he doesn't know much about them. Mm -hmm. So he ordered them specifically for me. Um, the the death metal wave, yeah, with the dark father. Mm -hmm. So I can't wait to get the rest. He's he's going to get the other the other two in from this wave. Mm -hmm. um, I think he said this week. So I'll pick those up from him. But man, I, I mean, I I had this Batman, mm -hmm. uh, but this one comes with the red guitar. The other one came with a sickle. Ooh, but. I don't know why this this <laughs> this guitar. I just love Batman with a guitar. It's That's crazy. Cool. It looks so good. Oh man! And what's really weird? Uh, I noticed this yesterday um, when I was looking at this Wonder Woman. It looks like they they uh, scanned Avril Lavigne's face <laughs> for Wonder Woman. Anybody, please, well, put it if camera, you, put it the camera so we can see. Like, can we? I don't know if it's gonna pick it up enough. That is that is very Avril Lavigne. You are right. <laughs> I mean, it really looks like oh, it. She was a skater boy. She said to me later, boy. <laughs> My little sister was so into Avril Lavigne; it was obnoxious. But. And then, thanks to Toy Toy Shiz for posting this surprise link, mm -hmm. Walmart had three. Uh, Justice League figures. Mm -hmm. They had uh, Cyborg, Aquaman. Oh, nice. And the Flash. 
I mm. think this was this was uh, Thursday. I think mm -hmm. that he posted this for ten bucks. Ten bucks? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Damn. It was just I don't know if it was uh, Marlin figures having these obnoxious discounts. Holy moly! That's and insane. they they I ordered them Thursday and they showed up today. That's how fast they did. I can't believe they got here this quick. I thought I was doing a pre-order. Mm -hmm. And here they are for $10 hairs. Wow. <laughs> Some versions of Skater Boy. Uh, it's weird, you know. <laughs> he, was, uh, he was a bat. I was a Themyscarian. Could it be any more obvious? <laughs> Nick Dunger. He was a Kryptonian. She said, Neil to Zodian. <laughs> I'll see myself out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and thank you to Gary mm -hmm. for picking up the uh, the Revelation figures for me. The only thing I ordered uh, for a Revelation was Battle Cat. Mm -hmm. So he came in on nice. Saturday. Nice. So I'm all caught up on Revelation. You thank you to Gary. Gary. That's right. Gary got to go too. Yep. And then. And then. And then. So I went to my local Habitat for Humanity restore. If you have one close to you, check them out. It's it's crazy what you will find there. Yeah. I got I got NECA Motu stactions. This what? Week. Look at this leech. Oh my god, from a from a Habitat for Humanity restore? Yes. Oh my god. So I got leech this this is this figure is a crazy nice wow no they don't have their stands or accessories but so i don't care not them for dirt cheap at a moat at a at a habitat for humanity restore yeah. i got clawful he's probably the most common out of everyone they made sure oh god those stashes though i've never had one but they look amazing oh. and i got tongue lasher wow amazing and guess what? What? Two bucks. A figure or for all of them? A, a figure. Two dollars? Yep. Wow. So I'm I'm going to be going back because that was, I think it was, that might have been Wednesday. Sure. Uh, so I went back Thursday to see if maybe they put out the, the stands or the accessories because people just uh, drop stuff off. And then stuff gets sorted in the back. They put it uh -huh. in. They put it in like a shopping cart, and then they go and they kind of put stuff back in the, you know, in the place where they might go. Because yeah. there's a toy. There is a toy aisle. Uh huh. Um, and there was. I should have bought it. There was a colossal uh, Jurassic World T Rex. I should have got that. Um. Wow. But I I check there probably two or three times a week because you never know what you're gonna find. And I literally have a restore within walking distance from my yes. house. Like, yes, yes, you do. I've been in there. there. I don't have toys like that in my restore. Mm -hmm. Maybe I need I to go more often. It, I went once or twice. I'm like, I mean, it's, I I like junk. Period. So I love going in through shops and whatever. But I'm not freaking NECA staction figures for two dollars. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> trust me, I was as surprised as you are. How? Did these land in that store? Because these, I mean, yeah, who who donates that to a to a thrift shop, right? The, these, wow. you know, these were sold in specialty stores, exactly. comic, comic book shops. Um, how did they get there? It's I want to know the story. I, I wish there was a stamp like "Follow George." You know? <laughs> oh my goodness! Wow, crazy. Um, a couple of comments there. Nick, uh, call the police. John is a thief of wicked awesome stacks figures. Wicked awesome. Um, I can't do a Boston accent, but can do one. These things are wicked pissa. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I just had a Willy Wonka moment. I thought those shows behind John were way farther back than they were. <laughs> uh, yeah, force perspective. Uh, <laughs> stations are awesome for us. Yeah, they they. 
I've seen one. I've never owned one. I've always wanted to own one for $2. Nicely done. Fantastic. Uh, John just backed up his truck and they went all the cool. <laughs> the you got to be hunting. You, you, you got to check everywhere <laughs> where you could possibly find something. Riley Bob, who was the kid selling his dad's toys for EDM hip hop music? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Heldor, hey guys, I love the show. Welcome, Heldor. Welcome to the show. Um, wow, two bucks, unreal, fantastic, nicely done, nicely done. Um, oh, hey, question about what about the BBTS exclusive origins tournament? I think we all ordered it. I ordered mine. Did you ordered one too? Right? I think we talked about it whenever yeah. it was a couple months ago. Was it a month ago? Two? I don't know. Times irrelevant post pandemic but i it was like a month ago yeah i think they're scheduled for next month or september mm -hmm. hmm. yeah hung when hung when as it says well somebody died in the family don't know better yeah it's clear the case Woo. i've been hopefully i mean hopefully that's not the case i don't want anybody to like a, a fellow to die and that's my biggest fear you know john and i have this kind of pact I mean, you, I don't know. I feel you probably have prices over, but especially for me, if I die, that 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 you sell my collection so that Colleen doesn't get swindled. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> I feel like at toys, we need to have those packed with our toy friends, just so that you know, if we pass on, you never know. You know, it could uh, strike us down anytime. I'm not going to think I'm immortal, but if that happens, unfortunately, uh, one, you know, we got to have each other's toy be uh, geeks back to make sure somebody doesn't dump off NECA action figures at a goodwill. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm sure if I perished, you would be the first call to figure out <laughs> what's happening with all of this. Be like, Jay, get your ass over here. I'm like, OK, <laughs> I'll be devastated because I've lost one of my best friends. But sure, uh, it's just that's what we got to do for each other. We got to have each other's back and to make sure we yep. don't lose. <laughs> Pop actor, uh, I asked to be buried with my motor collection. That's one way of going about it. Pop actor, it's true. You're gonna need a big plot though. That's the problem. <laughs> oh, man. Also, th those figures are haunted by ghosts of dead geeks. That's true. Have you have you had experienced any hauntings from these stations that you brought into the house? Nothing yet. Nothing yet. <laughs> I haven't spoke ill towards them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, true. I mean, you, you you have done your heroic deeds to go enter into pre pre attorneya. <laughs> <laughs> Comics. I'm having all my toys melted down and turned into my coffin. Not a bad approach. Coffins Not are bad. expensive. They might cost about as much as your <laughs> an extra coffin. Cries, cries while making battle sounds and smashing stories together. <laughs> uh, uh. Alex Martinez, do you have any McFarland sports figs at the park? Funny you should mention that. Uh, I kind of shifted a Padre square here just to be all Tatis. I have a Tony Gwynn display with a signed game worn jersey and game used glove and hat and stuff. Um, Tony Gwynn is my hero growing up, but I, I have the Tony Gwynn uh, McFarlane uh, figure. Um, that's the only one I, I know he did a Trevor Hoffman, but um, if he does a Tatis, I'll definitely get the Tatis. But Tony Gwynn was my man. Absolute. One of my essential human beings of my uh, growing up and form formative years as a San Diego kid. All right. <laughs> Picture of John getting drunk and talking smack on his toy to unleash the ghost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm actor. Uh, still trying to just get in trouble with uh, this is the SO. The girlfriend will throw all of them on the curb if I die. <laughs> What's your address? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That classic uniform is, so, uh, is cool. Love Tony. Yeah, Tony Gwynn. Again, for any kid growing up in San Diego, Tony Gwynn is a patron saint. He is like, again, it's just, uh, it's so much so that I cry anytime people like show extended footage of Tony Gwynn because he passed away young and uh, he passed away a couple weeks after my firstborn son, Zach, was born. And uh, it still hurts to this day that he that he died young. But yeah, Tony Gwynn, super important, uh, a figurative person in my life. But anywho, 
Uh, the Reagan Taurus classic man. All right, that I think that's it. That's it for it, lo, extra long show today. Uh, but fun to hang out with you all and geek out. Uh, John, uh, any final thoughts before we close things out today? <sighs> I got nothing. I got nothing. You, you know, for a while there, you're concerned you just weren't getting uh, good finds and stuff like that. But my friend, 2021 has been your year because I feel like every toy haul knocking it out of the park. Yep. I've had some good ones. I've had some good ones. And th- this, I can't, we don't have enough time to, to share what I, what else I have bought this week. <laughs> what do you do, like a special episode just to like go through the stuff you make? <laughs> <Yep. laughs> oh, man. Uh, Kirby Puckett. Oh, my God. Love Kirby Puckett. And again, died young as well. Uh, I remember uh, I traded two Kirby Puckett cards for a Tony Gwynn card um, because I had extras of the Kirby Puckett. Um, God, just trading cards with cousins and stuff like that. It was a ruthless sport, trading baseball cards. But I was obsessed. If if you had a Tony Gwynn card I didn't have, I would trade everything for that card. (laughs) But anyway. All right. uh, That is it. For this week's Toy Geeks, join us Sunday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have a lot of fun here. Thank you to everyone uh, in the chat. Had a lot of fun tonight. Uh, love the energy you all bring. And uh, who got Kirby's Motu collection when he died? No one knows. John, probably. Let's be honest. John probably got it. Uh, again, if you haven't done it yet, make sure you hit the like button. And uh, hit subscribe. Click on the bell icon. Bell icon to be notified when the latest episode of Dead Life drops. We'll see you all later. Until then, hasta luego, and goodbye.